Hey gang, Matt here. I'm sorry for the noise. It's a work day, um, so I got the compressor going. But I have a case here of immediate dentures, and he didn't have a whole lot of room, so you can see there's show through through here. So I'm going to show an example of how I kind of set these up. They're still on the base. If we had, um, if these were closed, I'd go ahead and uh, snip these supports off. But because I still need to bond teeth in, I'm going to hold off on that part. So I have this little resin drawer. Um, I just keep this here. This is the base. This is the MFH. Um, a couple of tents I use um, from uh, Annex Dent. Uh, so the Annex gum, I use the uh, light pink and red. I'd say I use the red the most, so I would stock up on that. But I use the uh, light pink around the gingival collars and then the red to give um, a little base. And then I use a little varnish here. Um, this one is Stern Vantage varnish, light cured. Um, I also use Palaseal sometimes, so it just kind of depends. And then I have a, a, a few different sizes of uh, paint brushes here. So what I'm going to do to get these, um, these are, have a very matte finish right now. And they, they feel very rough. Same thing with the teeth. One trick to get these um, really polished up and lustered is going ahead taking some uncured resin and painting it. And you don't need to make it sloppy, but you just want it to where it stays glistening. And so why I'm keeping these bases on right now is because I want to be bonding these in and I did not want uh, snipping the bases to interfere with me bonding in the teeth. Because like I said, if I hadn't, um, oh, how do I want to say, there we go, if I was doing it my more traditional way, I would have already kind of gotten those um, supports off, but. So yeah, I'm running to, running into uh, trouble from some of these supports here. I want to see if I can navigate around them. There we go. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is paint a little bit right on the back side, right on the gingival collars to help lock these in. See how I'm kind of caking that up back there? Help lock those into place a little bit more. And then I'm going to light cure those. I'm just doing it enough to give it some tack. I'm not trying to get my final go with it but any by any means. But see, so that gives it enough retention that I'll then put it in the uh, curing unit. And then we'll do the same thing for this one. I'm actually going to have to stop the video and get some more uh, base resin here, so. Okay, we're back. Got some more base resin here. And again, because I'm going to be bonding these teeth in, I'm going ahead and making this a little bit more liberal than I would usually.
kind of tricky doing this while also making sure I'm in camera. Apologies for any There we go. Okay, there we go. Now I made a little bit of a mess there. So I want to be... This is just a dry brush and I'm just cleaning off any denture resin that got on the teeth. Okay, gang, so I have these uh, printed up now, or bonded together. You can see, because they're immediate, very thin, so what I did was took, um, after I had them together, tack cured and everything, I also took a thin layer of the uh, base resin and smeared it in here too. Now everything is just real strong, not gonna come, come apart. So now we're gonna do a little bit of, um, fine tuning here. So what I'm going to do, and I will time lapse some of this because it'll get kind of boring, is I'm going to characterize the gums a little bit. Here I have the, uh, the uh, dark pink, see if I can, there we go, dark pink by the Annex gum. And then I also have this red paint. And I usually go the dark pink around the gingival collars and the red I splotch up kind of what I do is I put a dot just kind of interdentally up here in the uh, up in the gingiva and then I blend it out okay and this is just to break up the monochromatic um, pink and give it a little bit more of a um, kind of that what the fiber does and traditional acrylic give it a little bit more of a texture okay so here we go Okay, so again, with tints, you don't want to be too heavy. These are just, really kind of spread them out. So I'm not trying to give these gums periodontal disease. I'm just trying to break up the monotony here. And this uh, material is still going to be real thin and transparent. It's kind of like a, the Brazilian denture technique. Um, I'll do another video on that, explaining that a little bit more. But see, that just gives it a little bit of a pop. Not a whole lot, just a little bit of umph.
Okay, so now, um, I still have more curing that I can do, but it's cured enough for me to kind of do my thing here. Next, I'm gonna show you how to give the teeth themselves a good luster. And that is, if this is going to be too stock white, what you could do is give a little bit of um, composite tinting. Um, I like the OptiGlaze system. Um, I have a bottle here, I think. Yeah, here's OptiGlaze Clear. Here is this A+. So if you want to make this more of a darker A2, A3, you could add some of this. I'm not going to do that here because these are just immediates. But to give these a nice glaze, take some, have a little dab of your uh, tooth resin. Here I'm using the MFH. And I'm just going to lightly, 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 just enough to get these teeth wet. I'm not looking to lose the anatomy that I created. And, you know, I went in there with a diamond wheel to give these more embrasure space and all that stuff. I don't want to lose that characterization. So I'm just adding just enough to get these teeth wet. One um, criticism that you might have heard about the MFH resin is that it stains. And that is true, but I have found since giving these a nice gloss, they stain a lot less. And then of course you can also put on like a varnish afterwards, which I'm gonna do here as well, for even further protection and sealing of the teeth. So you can see, not losing any of the characterization, real, real thin layers, but just enough to get them wet. Just like that, and we'll do the same thing for the upper. All right, gang, we're on the home stretch here. So these are looking pretty nice, pretty polished. I am going for a little extra uh, stain blocker. I'm gonna use um, some light cured varnish here. And this is what I'm using right now. Um, I also like to use a Palisil, that's a very good one. And you don't need tons and tons of it. Just real, real light strokes here. Real light coating. You don't need tons. Just to give it a little bit of a glisten. So then what I'm gonna do, once I'm all done with this, is I'm going to cure these again and then I'm going to do a final cure in a glycerin bag. So I just have some cheapo glycerin from the store and uh, these little, uh, you want to make sure they're microwavable safe because it gets warm in those uh, cure boxes. But yeah, I'm just going to um, tack cure this first and then do a final cure for about 30 minutes um, in a glycerin bath. And then we'll go through our standard uh, polishing. Okay, here we are, final product, and there we go. Looks pretty good, if you ask me. Except for, you know, especially for a uh, temporary healing immediate denture. And so what's pretty neat about this is it's all delegatable and I fully recommend you train your team how to do this and I think it looks pretty darn good and for a full set, um, you know, $100, $200 all together depending on if you do the design or if you outsource the design to something like Lab Pronto, um, Labo 3D, a few of those type of places and then you, tr you train your assistant 
how to uh, process them and all that stuff, but I think you get a very nice functional printed denture um, and not lose your shirt on PPO write-offs or any of that stuff. So here's the temporary shirt that I was just showing you. Here is another um, case. This is the case I just did this before this. Um, duplicated uh, her existing dentures. That's why they're shaped like this. She just didn't like the um, lingualized occlusion. Everything was a very narrow buckle corridor. Teeth were rolled in. She didn't like that, but she liked the fit. So we duplicated the fit of her dentures, but gave her a new uh, new occlusion, new teeth setup. So, like I said, um, makes uh, makes in-house dentures a lot more uh, a lot more feasible for folks. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this, and stay tuned for for, for further um, classes, for further uh, webinars, stuff like that. So take care.